To wrap up our quick look at Perl, let's have at a couple of simple application examples. All three of these happen to do with email. When you publish your email address on a web page, there is a risk that people will harvest these email addresses. There are address traders that collect millions of email addresses and then sell them off for marketing purposes. And you may then be at the receiving end of what's known as unsolicited bulk email or also known as junk email or simply spam after a famous Monty Python sketch. Um, <clears throat> so the risk is that in a HTML web page, you may have your uh, email address exposed uh, by using the normal email syntax with an at sign in the middle, either as text or as part, for example, of a mail to scheme uh, URL. And <clears throat> one little trick to make life a bit more difficult for the address harvesters is to make some synonym replacement, for example, to hide the presence of the at sign such that at first glance it no longer looks like an email. And HTML does have a number of uh, escape sequences uh, for using either decimal or hexadecimal uh, representations of uh, ASCII characters. And <clears throat> I'm, I've used here the decimal example. You can write in HTML ampersand number sign decimal number semicolon in order to include a arbitrary ASCII character in this case with number 64. That's the at sign. Inside the URL syntax, there is a different notation. You can use simply a percent sign followed by two hexadecimal characters. Uh, so hexadecimal uh, 40 is also decimal 64. That's an in URL representation for the at sign. So if you want to write a little Perl script that reads an entire web page line by line, looks for something like this, either a href attribute with a mail to URL or just in the middle of anywhere an email address, then we can do this like this. So this is a two line Perl script because it contains two lines. Uh, I wanted to present it in a way in which you could insert it inside a shell script. So I've used a here document to uh, load these two lines. I'm using the minus P option to wrap this standard uh, while read line print loop uh, around this entire program. I'm using the minus I option to do uh, in place replacement. So the output file will afterwards have the same name as the input file. And then I simply apply this to all HTML files in my web space, the star here being expanded as usual by the shell. And all we're doing here is two regular expression based substitutions. And at first glance, what you see here is uh, maybe looking quite uh, scary. This is a typical example of why some people claim that some Perl scripts look a little bit like line noise. If you have some disturbance on a data line and the data line spits out just a couple of random ASCII characters that may look a little bit similar. But I hope you can now uh, decode this and after a while find it quite readable. So these are two substitution statements. So there will be a regular expression from the first slash to the second slash. This bit here will match something on the input line that's currently being processed. And what's between the second and the third slash will be the replacement text. And afterwards, after the third slash, we have the options here, global, substitute all occurrences of the pattern in the line. And I means do a case invariant match. So if, for example, href is capitalized, it will still match. The first thing we're matching is uh, from href up to the at sign. And we're capturing this. So whatever matches here 
will be recorded and will be available in dollar one such that we then can insert it as dollar one afterwards in the substitution text and we just look for href um, i've put here a backslash uh, in front of the single quote because that might otherwise interfere with the quote syntax mail to and now i'm looking for one or more characters that do not include the at sign which follows here or the closing quotation marks then we look for the at site itself which is outside these parentheses and then there's a second group of parentheses whatever they match will be assigned to dollar two afterwards and that is just any characters again other than an at sign or closing uh, quotation marks um, <clears throat> one probably could have used here any character at all and then just use the a question mark here to make a, a non-greedy match and then in the substitution we just have dollar one everything that was matched before the at sign then the replacement text for the at sign and then dollar two everything that was matched afterwards and we get uh, everything from here to here will be replaced with what we see here <clears throat> in the second line uh, this here, the first parenthesis here is um, a reasonable subset of all the characters that are allowed in the uh, in the local part of an email address everything to the left of the at sign if you read the actual standards there are actually many more characters allowed but these are probably the most common ones you will find um, and then the at sign and this is exactly the set of characters that's allowed in a domain name for example you can't have an underscore in in a domain name in an email address and likewise we then assemble as above here the substitution text and that's all it takes to make that substitution in Perl um, <clears throat> In terms of uh, spam countermeasures, of course, this is not a very sophisticated countermeasure. It still appears to remain uh, surprisingly effective, but there are more sophisticated things that you could do. For example, you could uh, remove the uh, email addresses completely from the source document and then insert them into the document with the help of some slightly obfuscated JavaScript, or you can use so-called capture techniques you make a representation of the email address for example as uh, as a pixel bitmap image uh, and then the uh, email address harvester would have to use optical character recognition and hopefully the effort then becomes too large for them to no longer bother about your particular address next example <clears throat> let's play the game the other way around we want to actually do some screen scraping we look at a web page and we want to extract some uh, email addresses to sell them off for profit uh, to some address dealer no please don't um, <clears throat> so we look at for example the uh, the people web page on the cl website and if we have a look at how it's structured there is a big table and for each person there is a table row and you can find in the table row um, there's an id attribute with the crs id of the person and then there is a table data field that contains uh, their surname comma first name possibly also a, a link to their website and what we want is instead a list of names and email addresses in a form in which it could be uh, fed into the mailing list uh, system of, of some email software. Um, <clears throat> so uh, we also want the output to be alphabetically sorted. Um, we possibly want uh, duplicate entries uh, to be removed. So for each CRS ID, there should be only uh, one entrance, uh, one, one output line, and therefore we will need two loops, one first to read the input and a second loop to uh, produce the output. 
<clears throat> so here one of of course many different uh, possible solutions i declare a variable that uh, stores the url of the uh, web page that we want to download uh, to actually download the web page i could of use of course use the uh, curl library that's available for Perl to uh, make this to do the download within the same process but here slightly easier to show is just the power of the open command where in the open command I start the curl command uh, by just handing over the URL and some options that keep it silent except if there is an error message then we want to see the error message on standard output and the output of the curl command we pipe then into this file descriptor HTML here. If any of this works, then we output a error message and stop the execution of the script. And then we iterate over all text lines that we can get from the uh, file descriptor. So this will iterate over the HTML file of this web page line by line. It will assign each line to the uh, standard variable dollar underscore and then if any of these lines starts with what appears to be a table row and an id attribute that looks very much like a crs id then we look further into this line and uh, we record whatever was matched here between parentheses as the crs id of that person and if in the same line we further find this uh, data field of the table, uh, which will have this attribute, which optionally will have this, uh, this hyperlink, but not all of them have this. This is why we put this in parentheses and then put a question mark behind it. And then we will have the uh, surname, comma, space, the first name, Again, optionally, the end tag for this hyperlink um, <clears throat> and then the opening uh, angle bracket for the next tag. And here we end the regular expression that matches. And now we can uh, build the email address, namely $3 is whatever was matched here. The first name $2 will have matched the surname, $CRSID will have matched the local part of the email address and we simply can assign this uh, under the key of the user's CRS ID, uh, their username, to a hash table dollar email. We don't have to declare this hash table anywhere by just assigning to it uh, for the first time it jumps into existence. We also need the surname separately such that we can sort alphabetically by surname and to make the sorting easier we force all these surnames here to be lowercase and if we find a table row that looks like it belongs to a person but then we're unable to actually find the data cell in it maybe that's a good reason to complain with a syntax error such that the programmer or user can look into what went wrong here and then we look at all the keys of this uh, hash table we sort them by surname so we take get the dollar a and dollar b are two keys and we first convert these keys into the corresponding lowercase surnames then we do a string comparison and the result of that will be used by the sorting algorithm to decide which of those two should come first and then this sorted list of crs ids uh, will be iterated over with S and we just print out all the prepared email addresses followed by a line feed. More recent versions of Perl's actually have another keyword called say instead of print and that is the same as a print except it automatically appends a line feed. Of course this kind of screen scraping or parsing of a web page makes numerous assumptions about how the web page is formatted and if you've ever written some screen scraper you may discover that uh, people regularly change the precise formatting of their web pages and there may be new things cropping up there may be 
changes in how the white space is used and so on. So um, these things can be somewhat fragile and therefore it's quite important to have here some uh, error messages that warn if something unexpected has happened when you parse data like this. And finally, a little two-line Perl script, very simple to parse an entire email header. A mail header, as defined in the internet standard RFC 822 or one of its uh, more uh, recent successors, uh, consists of a keyword, for example, received date to subject message ID, followed by a colon, followed by a space, followed by some field value. If the next line starts with some, some white space, then one can remove that white space and the line field, replace it with just a single space and read everything as if it were a single line. So there is this multi-line format uh, that is being used automatically whenever the value that belongs to this field is actually longer than about, I think, 70 or 72 characters. Um, and how can we get something like this into a hash table where we then can just look up, for example, whether the subject of this email contains the word Unix tools? One peculiarity here is, in addition to these RFC 822 header lines, uh, there is also an outer envelope with email that comes out of the RFC 821 SMTP protocol and some mail systems record the from address uh, that was delivered as part of the envelope as another line in front which just starts with from space and then some metadata from the envelope. So what we're doing here is we read the entire email header into a single scalar variable, dollar $header, and then we apply a regular expression substitution to that header. We look for any occurrence of a line feed character followed by one or more space characters. That would be, for example, here is a line feed followed by a space. This would be one of these continuation lines. And we just replace the line feed and the one or more space characters with a single space. And we do this everywhere in the string, so for the entire header. <clears throat> and then we use the split command in order to identify at the start of a line a couple of non-space uh, characters. This would be one of these keywords here, followed by a full stop, followed by one or more space characters. And what you can uh, see here, we put in the split command this regular expression and we have a capture group inside this regular expression. And if you do that, if in the regular expression inside a split command you put a capture group, then whatever gets captured is also output in the array that is returned by the split command. So without the capture group, you would normally split the string at the places where this regular expression matches and what matches is removed and then the space between these matches will be output as the in the output list that the split command uh, outputs. That's what we've done if we removed, for example, the colon as a field separator in some previous example. But here the separator actually contains useful information, namely the name of the keywords. Therefore, we want to preserve it. And then we have the special case that there is this first line here. And to make the entire output here follow the pattern key value key value, we add here a pseudo key. <clears throat> I could have written here single quotation mark from single quotation mark comma to just prefix a single uh, keyword to the output of list. I've used here instead the, uh, the arrow uh, sign the arrow sign here. It acts just like a comma. It has one additional uh, syntactic trick, namely if there is a, a bare word, something that doesn't have any quotation marks uh, to the left of it, then it is interpreted as a string. So you don't have to put to the left of this um, 
arrow here uh, quotation marks around um, a single word because very often this notation is used to indicate that whatever comes before it is a keyword that will be used as a key in a in a hash table and these are all strings and therefore you get the quotation here for free. Just another of these little bits of syntactic uh, sugar that allow you to write very short and compact Perl scripts but that are uh, useful to know about otherwise you may be slightly puzzled when you encounter these in the world. So we now have from first line received next field date next field and so on. So we have now here an array of key value key value key value pairs. We just assign this into a hash table h percent hdr and now we can just write dollar hdr subject again in these curly braces here because Perl knows that whatever comes here is going to be used as a keyword in a hash table lookup. If you have a short string uh, that doesn't contain any punctuation or space characters or so you can actually drop the quotation mark as some syntactic sugar. So we now can test if the header line subject uh, contains a string with the substring Unix tools then do whatever is required. So I hope these examples gave you a little bit an impression of how quite easily you can take apart uh, plain text files and extract whatever you, data you need out of them using Perl and present it in some other form.